You guys are not going to believe what ASRock have done with this B365M motherboard. They've put RGB LEDs underneath the board. I'm pretty sure that alone is going to drop VRM temperatures and also flatten out any uh, mishaps in the frequency response curves with the audio. Hope you're all doing well out there, wherever you are in the world. Right here, we've got the B365M Phantom Gaming 4 motherboard from ASRock. Now, straight away, you're probably wondering what are the differences between B360 and B365. Well, the first one is this one uses the Cabby Lake platform chipset hub. Just like the Z370, they're using 22 nanometer here. The B360 actually uses the 14 nanometer chipset hub. The main difference being USB 3.1 Gen 1, which is on the B365, uh, versus the B360, which has USB 3.1 Gen 2. But that out of the way, we've got here this board, which I'm going to be testing, putting a 9900K through it, which who even knows if it's intended to have a 9900K run through it, stressing this VRM, giving you guys the whole circle tour of a Tech yes City motherboard review. We're going to be testing this heatsink out. We're going to be testing the USB 3 speeds out. We're going to be testing the onboard audio. And of course, seeing if this VRM can handle the heat. Let's get on with the show. So running through this motherboard's physical attributes, we have what ASRock claims is a 10-phase VRM, which I'm guessing is 6 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1, with six phases being dedicated towards the CPU. Now for the chokes, they're using Magic 45 amp chokes. Then for the caps, we've got 12K Nichicon caps. And then for the MOSFETs, so high side first, we've got the PZ0903BK. And then for the low side, we got the PK618A. Now I can't find any details on these MOSFETs. There's nothing out there in the wild, uh, but for the PWM controller, they're using the UPI UP9521P. And then moving through the rest of this board, we've got three M.2 slots. One of those being dedicated for Wi-Fi, the other two being dedicated for NVMe drives, which they both individually have PCIe Gen 3X4 speeds but together in RAID 01, they do drop down to PCIe Gen 2. Moving over to the back of the board, we've got USB 3.1 Type-A, four connections, a USB Type-C, and then at the top, we've got USB 2, two of those, and a PS2 port, as well as a HDMI and a DisplayPort 1.2. And then for the NIC, we've got an Intel i219V, one gigabit per second solution. And then below that, we've got manual 5.1 analog surround out, as well as an optical out, powered by the Realtek 1200, so not the Realtek 1220 that you may be used to seeing. Going back to the board, however, we've got three PCIe standard slots, the top one being a 16X slot. Below that, we've got a 1X, and then below that, we've got a 16X style, but this actually truly only supports X4 speeds. And then lastly, we've got six SATA 3 native ports, four DIMM slots, as well as a 12 volt single RGB out header and two five volt addressable RGB headers on the side here. One of those being tall, one of those being sideways. Right beside the smooth cutout on the PCB here, which has an invert and says Phantom Gaming on it with RGB underneath, as well as getting RGB underneath the top heatsink here. But with all that aside, let's whack this thing on the test bench and see if we can make it flip out with the 9900K. So this is the first time booting it up without going into the BIOS. And we can see here that the CPU initially started out going out to about 155 watts uh, with the auto default 4.7 gigahertz, I think on all cores and then it drops down to 95 watts. And essentially, uh, there's no throttling going on, so the CPU is under control, but the actual uh, board itself did throttle down to around four to 4.1 gigahertz here. So we're gonna go into the BIOS and see if we can change some of the power limit settings, see if we can alleviate this, because I do wanna run it for a good 10 minutes and see if it can pass the stress test with out of the box uh, settings for the 9900K. So we're now on the ASRock BIOS, and we're gonna try and change a few settings to keep that uh, limit up there on the 9900K. And so basically what we do is we hit F6 and we go into the advanced settings here. And the ASRock settings are really good for basic or advanced. Uh, on this B365, it looks like you get all the advanced options, 
minus a couple of limitations on the B360 chipset. We'll talk about that pretty soon. The first thing we wanna go into is uh, the overclocking tweaking tab and into CPU configuration here, just to up those power limits uh, that you may have seen uh, plaguing some of the reviews when the 9900K was first released. So if we hit in 5,000 on all those, it should just max them out as well as the long power duration limit. So that should essentially up the limits on uh, the CPU here so we don't throttle. And then we move into DRAM configuration and we have no option for XMP profiles, which I'm not sure if that's a limitation on the B365 chipset, but regardless, ASRock do have a great feature here called the DRAM tweaker. Now we go in here and we can suddenly see that all our XMP profiles and all the profiles saved into this memory are essentially available. And so what we can do is we can select the memory up here and then go over here to the uh, XMP and select them all. And that'll essentially lock in all the settings for that stick. And then we can go to the next uh, stick in the slot and do the exact same thing and lock all those uh, XMP settings in manually, uh, sort of bypassing any limitations on the board itself. And so we click OK and that will uh, lock all our settings in. Uh, some other useful features on this motherboard include the ability to control RGB. It's called a polychrome RGB and you control this from the BIOS as well as all the options connected to the uh, actual motherboard itself. And then you've also got one thing that I really like about the ASRock boards in the BIOS is the ability to flash the BIOS through internet flash. Now I did have a uh, pre-release BIOS here and it didn't support the Corsair memory, uh, but after quickly using the internet flash, I updated to the retail release and now my Vengeance Pro memory is working fine. And you've also got hardware monitor, fantastic tuning where you can control all the different uh, fan headers on the board, where in this case there is five fan headers included on this motherboard, which is good for a uh, mid-range motherboard. And you can set them custom if you wish to, or you can just have them full blast if your fans are quiet. Uh, so after that, we can just go to either back to easy mode or back to advanced mode and save and exit these changes. Or before that, if we wish to save this into a profile in Overclock Tweaker, and then go down to Overclock Tweaker and just call it max limit 9900K. And that way I know this is ready to go. So now we've been testing out the CPU, the 9900K. Good news is it goes to 4.6 gigahertz on the B365M Phantom Gaming uh, 4. However, it does throttle uh, without a fan over the VRM. So we were getting, a, as we can see with the line up over here, uh, without the fan on it, throttles after about a minute and 50 seconds in. Uh, with the fan on, it's just been going absolutely fine, keeping that uh, CPU absolutely stable. And we did get the FLIR 1 uh, temperatures over it. And so it's about 75 degrees with the fan on there. And this is in the middle of summer. So we're talking 27 degrees ambient in this room right now. So it does get pretty damn hot uh, where I am at the moment. So it is kind of like a worst case scenario for this motherboard. Uh, but besides that, it's doing an okay job. Uh, but if you do want to run a 9900K, I'd suggest getting some sort of cooling over the VRM. Because as we saw here, uh, without the actual uh, fan on it, it does throttle pretty quickly. And so things do heat up on the VRM pretty quickly and it will throttle the CPU down to about four gigahertz if this happens. So besides the VRM, there are a lot of other features that we will want to test out with this motherboard. For instance, the USB 3 speeds are absolutely fine, giving my Kingston USB drive over 300 megabytes per second. The NIC speeds uh, file transfer test, that was fine too. But what about the audio with the Realtek 1200 series? Here we tested it out with a manual sweep test and found the frequency response curve to be solid. Not the best I've seen, uh, but still solid nonetheless. We got a four decibel roll off with 10 Hertz to zero Hertz and then 10 to 20 Hertz. We got, I think like a 0.1 decibel roll off. So very impressive there. Moving through the rest of the frequency after 1K, we do see a slight wave. I did have to go retest this, but the retest did confirm what I was seeing the first time around and that was it's slightly shaky after 1K. Not in a bad way, as you can see the line there is pretty smooth, uh, but regardless, it's not as good as what I've seen in the past. Looking at the crosstalk levels, these are phenomenally good. We're looking at negative 80 to 85 decibels on each channel, and the good thing is they've finally fixed uh, the crosstalk problem where over 90, 
it'll leak from the left channel to the right channel. There was no leaking whatsoever, all the way up to a volume level of 100. And then for the mic import, it looks like they've gone away with noise suppression. So plus 30 dB, 100 volume will introduce noise. Same with plus uh, 20 dB and 100 volume. Uh, so the sweet spot for this motherboard with the mic import is plus 20 dB, 50 volume level and that will give you relatively no noise. Your friends will be able to hear you in games really well. But the breakdown with audio here is if you've got budget audio gear, like a budget headphone or headset and a budget microphone, this board will do absolutely fine. However, if you are an audiophile and you do have high quality equipment, you may wish to step it up to a dedicated DAC amp solution. Now for the M.2 NVMe slots, I tested them out. The speeds were absolutely fine and the heatsink itself, I am glad to say it does work properly. The software reported 50 degrees and then after we put the heatsink on, we got 45 degrees. After about 20 minutes of stress testing, on the hardware side, we went from 65 degrees down to 43 degrees, but it is important to note that the heatsink is blocking the actual chip that we read before. And then the final test I wanted to run here was Cinebench, where it looked like it was getting 4.7 gigahertz constant. And then on the single core boost, they were reporting they were going up to 4.9 gigahertz. Uh, during that single thread test. And then running over to a game like Resident Evil 2, we could see the clock speeds fluctuating between 4.6 and 4.7 gigahertz. So it does look like ASRock are implementing features at the BIOS level to be able to break a 4.6 gigahertz limit and push it to 4.7 and even 4.9 on the single core boost speeds. So now we're at conclusion time with the B365M Phantom Gaming 4 motherboard. What do I think of it? Well, for starters, the chipset itself, B365. I'm not impressed like at all with this chipset, but I think ASRock have done a good job in implementing a solid all-round motherboard. The audio checks out, the NIC, the USB 3 speeds, the features, PCIe Gen 2 with the heatsink that works, and then the VRM if you add a fan to it. And keep in mind, this is a 9900K. It's a $500 CPU in Australia. It's around 800 AUD. And this motherboard's going to cost around 80 to 90 US dollars. And in Australia, I'm guessing around 130 Aussie. And so it's going to be very uh, budget orientated, but still be able to get up and boogie. If you get a couple with an 8700K or a 9700K or an 8700, you're gonna have absolutely no problems whatsoever. If you do, for some odd reason, want to couple it with a 9900K, then definitely think about getting a fan over that VRM. We saw the temperatures drop from 110 degrees all the way down to 75 degrees with that fan. That's a massive drop, not just for keeping your CPU from throttling, but also for longevity, if you wish to keep your VRM cool and have it running for a very long time. And the last thing that impressed me about this motherboard was the BIOS. It's actually the same fully featured BIOS as their higher end motherboards, except of course, you've got that DDR4 memory limitation there with 2,666 megahertz. However, ASRock still offer the DRAM tweaker, which will enable you to get the most out of your memory in terms of sub timings and also speeds. And you can still from then maybe lower the timings a little bit more to extract the best out of your DDR4 memory, as well as having the RGB control in the BIOS itself and that fantastic tuning for making manual fan curve profiles. Anyway guys, let us know what you think of the B365 platform. More specifically though, let us know what you think of ASRock's implementation. I think they've done a decent job at the price point. If you're gonna couple it with a 9900K, as I said before, do get a fan over that VRM. Uh, but if, I guess if you're putting a 9900K on any budget orientated motherboard, I would suggest putting a fan over the VRM if you're going crazy on the overclocks. Anyway guys, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to hit that like button. Also, if you're enjoying the content, you wanna see the minute it's uploaded to YouTube, don't forget to hit that sub button with the little bell turned on. And if you wanna get that inside scoop before it even gets to YouTube, Tech yes City on Instagram, where I post up some pictures about what I'm doing before it even gets to YouTube. And with all that aside, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.